What's up guys, Shane of 3D Printing, and today, guess what? It's part five of the Hypercube. Let's get this thing printing. Welcome back guys. So on today's schedule, what we're doing is we're replacing the heated bed. We're putting an ultra base on there, a heated ultra base, so not just the glass. It has the whole build plate there as well. We're take, we took off this MK2B build plate. This is just a heated PCB. This is a $10 thing versus about 20 bucks for the ultra base with the heated bed included there. I made some new uh, Z brackets, I guess, or bed brackets in order to hold on the bed because I'm not very good at cutting aluminum extrusion. This one is a little bit too long. This one was a little bit too short. So to fix that, I made my own solid bed mounts and then I just drilled where I needed to have holes. Problem solved. And then we're gonna go ahead and install the extruder. So I have here an E3D clone that we're gonna be using for now. I'll probably end up putting a legit one on there later. I have two different, the stock part cooling fan that Tech2C made. And then I found this one on here, which is covers about 270 degrees around the nozzle. Do that on there. And then we're gonna print. So I really wanna see if we can get this printing today. That's my goal is to do that. So the very first thing I'm gonna talk to you about is it looks a little bit different than when you guys last saw it. And it's a little hard to see with the background there. So I ended up switching out, actually you can't even tell this. I ended up switching out the actual carriage for Arthur's carriage because it had the uh, captive nuts built into the model where Tech2Cs did not. And that's a really big thing to have. You can lock things down so much easier having captive nut holes. And then I went ahead and changed out, I, because of that, I ended up having these extra little uh, tensioners that went on there. So I had to cut a whole new belt because the belt did not have enough slack in it to compensate for the new tensioners. And then I just did a little bit of quick cable management. I just kind of spun them around here uh, just to make things again a little bit easier for when we're gonna move everything around. I don't want anything to get in the way of the bed as it moves. Eventually all the cables will, for like the hot end, the, yeah, the hot end portion will come up over here. We're not there yet, but that eventually is how it's gonna go. But for today's test, we're not gonna do that. We spin this around here. So this is the extruder. It actually, they wanted it mount on an angle up here on this bracket, but I kind of like it right here. So this is Tech2C's extruder that he made. Uh, it uses a 608ZZ bearing, and it's, it's an MK8 uh, extruder knob on here, the hob gear. So we're using that for now, all 3D printed parts right there. Uh, you can loosen this off and actually take this whole piece off, and this gives you more tension on here. But right now, it seems to work okay. And then the spool holder, uh, so this takes a extra piece of the 10 millimeter carbon fiber, which is super duper strong. And once you bang it in there, it's in there. Like this is not coming back out. But the problem here is that the spool would eventually wiggle its way and fall off. So I went ahead and just took this, sliced off a piece of it, made it 10 millimeters wide, and then printed that model. And then I came up with this. So this still needs to be hammered on, but I did add in a spot for an M3 grub screw right there, right here, if it over focus on there. Uh, I had some extra ones of those, so I just used that. You can use a regular old M3 screw if you have one. That'll work out, but that I'm doing that, and now a spool can't, I mean, there's no way to get a spool off of this now or for it accidentally to pop off, so that's fine. And I just moved the board down here into the bottom for now. I don't think this is gonna be its final resting place, but it actually isn't half bad of a location. The only issue is none of the limit switches actually reach in any easy manner. So when I go and actually hide these into the aluminum extrusion eventually, none of them are gonna fit. So I need to figure out what I'm gonna do about that when we get to cable management, which will be a whole different thing to worry about today. I just wanna worry about finishing up the build plate and getting the extruder on and maybe try and get a print done. As I already said, we're gonna go ahead and use the Ultra Base. The, this is the AnyCubic Ultra Base, and this is the heated bed version. So here is just the actual Ultra Base glass with a nice big sheet of sticky stuff. Uh, I don't know if it's 3M or what it is, but it holds like none other from what I'm told. I have it on the, well, I have just the Ultra Base on the CR10 right now, and it obviously comes on the AnyCubic i3 Mega. But this kit you can buy, I think this was either 20 or $25. You can get it on Amazon if you wanna get Prime. AliExpress is maybe like a dollar cheaper. So it's fine just getting it from Amazon and you know not waiting a month to get it. So my only oddity with this, it comes with this like greenish looking 
uh, protective skin. So take that off, but then on the bottom here, you can see all the traces on there, and that's all where it heats. And it goes all the way out to the edge. I don't know what the internals of the, the MK2B or the 3A, all the different new ones, or the 42 that comes out now. I don't know how all of those look, but actually seeing all these traces uh, lets me know that at least you know it's close to get there. Now these screws that it comes with, they have like a, it's a regular M3, and then it's got this like nub on it, and then it's flat. What you have to do is, these actually end up getting pressed in to this build plate, and then, but in order to do that, you have to use these washers and nuts that came with the ultra base. Okay, that's great, but there's no thumb screws. That's the one downfall I think with this plate is that the i3 Mega comes with these awesome, they have an ex their extended uh, neck thumb screws and they work great. They're easy to get to, you're not messing with your fingers trying to get into them and they turn very well. They, you know, I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with them. You know, and uh, again, the clearance is the biggest thing. You're not real close to the build plate, hard to get your fingers up in there. Well, this didn't come with anything. Luckily, I was originally gonna go with the MK2B build plate and I had to get my own mounting hardware. So I have some regular old uh, knurled M3 thumb screws, I guess we'll call these, uh, thumb bolts, thumb nuts, that we're gonna use on this instead. And I'm also going to use the springs so it doesn't come with the nuts and again, it also doesn't come with the springs. And the nice thing about this kit that I bought, this uses big heavy duty extruder springs so these are not gonna give much at all and they'll be very easy. It makes things a lot easier to level having these nice, thick, heavy, heavy gauge uh, springs. So I'm gonna peel off this protective layer. I'm gonna go ahead and get these uh, actually attached in there and embedded into the bed. And then I'm gonna apply the ultra base on the top and then we can get that mounted. And when I go to mount this, I'll give you guys a nice close up of the mounts that I made for the bed and I'll end up putting those on Thingiverse so if you guys wanna try them out or if you're off by just enough where the stock ones don't work from Tech2C, you can print these out, set your bed down, drill your holes, make the holes a bit bigger and then you're off to the races. So just read about the bed. So when you put this together, so there's no directions that came with the bed. So I had to look at my ultra base on the i3 Mega to see how this actually goes together. What you do is you put the bolt through add the nylon washer and then the nut, then use a pair of needle nose and crank down the nut until the head of the bolt is flush with the actual build plate itself, the aluminum build plate that's there. It's tapered so it goes all the way down in there and that is set. So this is ready to go. And now let's take a closer look here at the bed mounts that I made so you can see what I had to do. Okay, so these are my bed mounts. These are actually the exact same as Tech2Cs, but what I had to do was make them solid and I pulled them out a little bit so that I could actually drill my own holes. So here you see uh, that's the hole. So I just literally set the bed on top, lined these up with to be roughly the middle would be lined up with the hole in the bed, took a drill, put four pilots in there real quick and then went ahead and took a bigger one so that an M3 bolt, if I can find one here, will go through with ease because I'm not actually threading it into these. These are just pass-throughs. So it's just slightly bigger than that and it's good to go. I wanna say, I actually forget what size that was, 3 8 No, I think 3 8 is too big. You'll figure it out, but you just want just enough so that your bolts slide through easily. And then once I get the bed on there, you'll see what that's like. So oh, I gotta push the carriage back, okay. So you line up that back side, and I line up this side. Just sits right down into there. So that's how that goes. I'm gonna add the springs now, and then this part is done. Okay, so here is the carriage here, all assembled. The hot, this is the main plate, and then this hot end plate lips, uh, clips right onto there. The part cooling fan just slides up into there, and then there are two uh, bolt holes down the bottom that we're just gonna screw that into this plate. So the easiest thing to do right now actually get the hot end in there. So we're gonna go ahead and take out these two screws and mount the hot end. That is nice and tight in there now. And then the part cooling fan. It's also super easy and it just bolts right onto the top there on this right here. So it just literally just sits on here, like so, just kind of barely goes in the lip and then gets mounted there. 
Okay, so almost all the wires, the one thing left is the actual fan that's gonna go right onto here. We're gonna go ahead and use the stock 30 millimeter fan for now, but eventually I'm gonna print out a 40 millimeter adapter to go on here and use a much quieter fan, uh, probably the Noctua 25 millimeter thick by 40 by 40. That's a nice thick fan, lots of airflow with that. The 10 millimeter, not quite thick enough, 20 millimeter is much better. So, and I'll tighten down my nozzle so this doesn't flip around like that. So yeah, okay, I'm gonna wire this up and get that other fan on there. We'll be almost good to go. One thing I did get to mention is that these were the original uh, Z carriage parts. So pretty much I replaced everything on the Z because I cut everything wrong. I think the configurator is a little bit wrong and I know Jamie said he was gonna look into it. Uh, he's super Jamie, he goes by on a lot of the forms, things like that. But these are actually too short for the plate. So I had to end up just moving all of this just, I actually had the extra ones left over from whenever I extended the Y. I went ahead and just used those for that and it works out great now. And I have it more centered in the actual printer so that the head, I mean, it goes all the way back anyways, but the head goes all the way back and it's just at the beginning of the plate there. So I mean, I'm off by maybe like four or five millimeters. Maybe I'll bring the bill plate a little more forward, but as of right now, it's pretty much perfect. And now I'm going to go ahead, give it some power. We're gonna level the bed and see how a dry print goes without any filament in, in there. Okay, so power's on to it, which is good. Everything seems to be functioning okay. We're gonna go ahead and do home. We're gonna do home everything. There's X, Y, and Z. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my motors and just check that I'm not Check that I'm not hitting the bed, which everything looks good there. And then we're gonna go ahead and do print. I'm just doing a dry print right now. It's uh, So it's hot end zero and bed zero, and it just is off to the prints right away. And it's just a 20, 20 foot I sliced a while back just to have something to print without actually have anything going. Uh, and then just to confirm, and confirm here, it looks like my extruder is going in the right direction, which is good and let it get through layer one. And then I wanna see on layer two if my part cooling fan actually turns on. And then we should be able to get a print. And looking here at the actual hot end and the part cooling fan, sorry that light is right back there. Let me get in there. So you can see that's my clearance from where the part cooling fan comes down and where the nozzle comes down. So it's really tight clearance and it looks pretty good, I'm liking that. The block is backwards, so the fat end is towards the front of the hot end, just because I don't want the heater block to be near the PLA or the PETG uh, part cooling fan. I just don't want it to melt, even though I'm primarily doing pretty much PLA and PETG on this machine, but I could do others. I mean, it's, I mean, it's a Bowden, so you see what you can do. But either way, that looks good. I'm gonna wait for the second layer to go by. If that goes okay, I'm gonna throw some PLA in here and see what happens. All right, that came out great. So I'm gonna go ahead and feed some filament up into here. I threw some in just while I was printing. We'll feed this in, and we're gonna try an XYZ cube. You can't see me because I'm off the screen. So the filament's in there, but I want to just tighten down the nozzle. I forgot that I didn't do that yet. So right now I'm heating it up to 220 degrees. Or actually, we're gonna do 230 degrees. And then I'm going to use the, I have the E3D wrench and just a regular old crescent wrench here. I'll hold, use the crescent wrench to hold the heater block in place. And then I will use the E3D ratchet or the socket here to actually tighten down the nozzle to get a nice tight fit in there. That way no uh, filament is going to leak out on me. One final click. Okay, that is good to go. We're gonna go back and let's get this camera up here so you guys can watch it actually go. Okay, we're gonna go print. We're gonna do an XYZ calibration cube, hit okay. And it's gonna finish heating up and we'll start it. All right, as you can see right now, it's printing. Hoorah! So the first one finished up, uh, well, the first one I stopped, 
went ahead, recalculated my E steps. For some reason, they were set to 400 and change. I don't know. So I set it to 100, did a couple calculations, came out to about 103.9 is what it needed to be set to. Did that. This cube came off and it's pretty good. It's a little under extruded for some reason. So, so I went ahead and updated my extrusion multiplier from 0.9 to 0.95. And that is what's coming off the printer right now to check that out. But other than that, uh, everything seems to be working out well. It's super quiet as you can hear. Uh, you can just now start to hear some of the fans on it. The TMC 2100s are for the X and Y, and then I have A4988 drivers for the Z and extruder because those don't move that much. Well, they move, but not, they're not as loud and as quick movements as the uh, X and Y move. So that's why you only really ever need to upgrade two steppers in a Core XY or rep, any RepRap style printer. On a Delta, you have to do all three, X, Y, and Z. My thing here is going goofy crazy. I don't even know if I'm still recording right now. Lost my little display here, so at least we're still recording. Uh, so yeah, this is printing at 60 millimeters a second right now. I didn't want to push it too much. I kind of want to get a baseline for how things are going, how the cooling is doing, uh, again, how my e are doing. I'm doing running cooling at 50%. Oh, I also did, I did run a PID tune twice on the hot end and once on the bed just to kind of tune those a little bit more. They were pretty off in the version I was using, so those are dialed in, and it gets up to temperature much quicker and much less swing. There's about a three degree swing still on the hot end for some reason, so I'm not sure about that, but either way, I can play with that some more later. This is printing at 205 and 60 with the ultra base. When the ultra base cools down, prints pop right off, which is why I chose it for this printer. I really like it. So as you can see, it's finally printing. It's great. I'm super happy about this, and we're going to call it good on part five. Now, part six is going to be more of the electronics and cable management. Once I finish part six, I think I'm going to be able to call this printer complete. I don't think there's anything else I want to change too much. Again, I do have this other fan duct I want to check out. I'm going to do some bridge testing with this version, and then I'm going to go ahead and put this one on and see how it does, because the 5015 fan puts out tons and tons of air, and in that current one, it's a straight shot on, so running at 100% is too high for PLA. So I think running at 100% with this, you know, roughly 270 degrees coverage, but I can still see the front, which I like. I think this one will end up doing much better, but. The proof is in the pudding, so I have to do some tests to find out about that. And again, we'll figure out where I'm going to put the final board, how I'm going to mount everything. I need to extend some of the wires for some of the end stops. They're not quite as long, but for the motors, I have really long steppers, uh, stepper cables, which came, oh, I think they were like 10, they were basically a dollar a piece. I got 10 for $10, and they're a meter long. They're crazy long for what I need. So I end up just making the custom length, however long I need to be, cut that down, and then it'll be perfect because I have a DuPont connection kit with tons and tons of connectors so I can easily swap those out without a problem. I did notice also that my uh, retractions are not dialed in on this yet. Obviously, I mean, this is my third print now on this machine. I do have tuning to do on it, but again, that won't take too long. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. Again, I'm sorry this takes so long, but this Hypercube ends up not becoming a priority for things that are sent to me. This is a personal project, which almost all of it is out of pocket, so there's that. And... Again, it just it doesn't rank high on my priority list, even though you guys are screaming for updates on it. I will try to get this part edited soon to you, and I will try and get part six done and edited also soon. I want to finish this up before I move in June. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video series, and if you do, please give this video a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Either way, talk in the comments. Let me know what you guys think about the build, anything I can do to improve this. I know I'm still running his basic setup, but I want to go off Tech2C's basic setup first and build off of that. If you guys want to support me, help me fund this kind of project, make sure to become a Patreon down below. Donate me a dollar more per monthly basis. I greatly appreciate it. If you guys want to send me a donation without committing to a monthly deal, uh, down below there's a Streamlabs tip you can send via that. Go straight to PayPal, or you can buy me a coffee, help me buy some new lighting for the studio. That's what I'm working on right now. And also you can go ahead and use my affiliate links down below. There's lots of them down there. There's parts where I'm buying all these things from, or I should say links for I'm buying all these parts from. So I appreciate anything you guys do, even if it is just watch this video and let the ads play. I thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, happy printing.